Hey guys. It's been a long time since I filmed a houseplant collection tour. My houseplant setup has changed quite a bit in the last, I mean, it's changed a lot of times in the last year or so. And I thought it was time to do an updated tour of me plants. I wanna show you my plants. Don't judge me, please. A, my house is dirty. B, I don't have very good design style. And C, it's just kind of boring. <laughs> Let's get back into the plants. Starting off in me kitchen, I do have a plant sitting here that's pretty much sat here forever. This is a golden pothos living in water, just has some water in there. And then I also added a couple of cuttings of philodendron Brazil. I chopped up my Brazil for a video. Well, I took some chops for my Brazil for a video and didn't want the extra chops to go to waste. So I just stuck it in here and they're doing well. Just hanging out in water, sitting back here by my butter. Which really quick side note, if you follow me on Instagram, I already posted this here, but I have this butter dish. Okay, tell me if I'm doing it wrong. Um, I put the butter in there with a knife so that I could see the hello every time I lifted it up. But I don't know if this is correct. People on my Instagram were kind of divided. And then I realized that butter is not meant to be left on the counter, but I've always left it on the counter. I'm confused. Anyway. Okay, so next up we are in still my kitchen. We are still in my kitchen. Here I have a few plants. So up here we have a philodendron lemon lime and it also has a little bit of Thai sunrise mixed in. You can kind of see these variegated leaves. Those are Thai sunrise. This is upright lemon lime philodendron, but I really like this plant. It actually needs water. I'm gonna giving it, be giving it some water after I film this. Hang in there, little buddy. And then next to that, we have Peperomia Hoffmanii. I recently pot, well, not recently, but in one of my more recent videos, I potted this up. It's now been in here for a few weeks, doing really well. And I am hopeful that I'm not going to kill this. I think I'm doing pretty well with it. Last time I had one of these, I killed it like almost instantly. So I'm feeling pretty good right now. And then this one is kind of a sad story. So I just have it hanging out in here for now. I actually pulled this out of my biorb. It's a, Type of Hoya, I can't even remember what kind of Hoya it is, but it was used to really high humidity and I decided to put it just like out in the open and it did not like that. So I'm trying to recover it by putting it in this little pastry cover thing that I'm using as a cloche to hold in humidity. We'll see how it does. And it's just living right here for now until I know if it's going to be nursed back to health and then I can kind of move it elsewhere, see how it does and then maybe move it around. And down here, let me move you closer. Have a Anthurium. Crystallinum. Yeah, I think this is a crystallinum. Let me know for sure. I'm pretty certain that's what this is, but doing pretty well. This is the newest leaf and I'm excited for it to pop out another one. I've actually had this for a long time, but when I moved it out here into the open, it dropped some leaves. It did not like being moved for some reason, but I am hopeful that it's going to push out a lot of new leaves now that it's moved into this spot already. Here we have an Alocasia dragon scale. I think this is an Alocasia Borneo dragon scale or something like that. This is the newest leaf since it's been moved here. For a while where I had it before, it was like putting out a new leaf, dropping the old one, but we have three leaves here and they're doing great. So I am very happy with this. It's so beautiful. <gasps> Would you look at that texture? Oh, and then look at the back of the leaves. The veining is like red, not like red, it is red. And I love this plant. So I'm hoping that they will continue to do well right here. Fingers crossed. E -e -e. Let me actually unplug and plug this in so it'll turn on. Ugh. Is that gonna work? No, there we go. Here we have me bi orb, which I actually filmed a video replanting this and I don't know what happened. Half of the footage when I went to edit the video is just gone, non-existent. So it will no longer be a video, but I did film part of a video at least and <laughs> it just didn't work out. So it was getting too overgrown and I needed to fix it up. So we have quite a few plants in here. I will insert some close-ups. We have um, a Ludicia discolor, the dark jewel orchid back here. We have another jewel orchid. I don't know the names of them. Some begonia, a lot of micans. Um, Begonia amphioxus, Sarawak, a variegated Raphidophora hayi, hayi, I don't know how to say it. Syngonium podophyllum albo, an Aglionema, I forget the name, a, a, mania, a mania, something like that, a Syngonium ribbon, and a Begonia 
Negro Census. So yes, that's what we have going on in there. I love Me Buy Orb, it's so cool. I'll link this down below if you're interested in getting one for yourself. They are definitely, they are something that's definitely a splurge, but if you're into terrariums or you're starting to get into terrariums, I think this is a really excellent option. I absolutely love my Biorb, and I personally haven't had any issues keeping any variety of plants in it, honestly. It's done very well for every plant I've put in here. So, highly recommend, will be linked down below. This video isn't sponsored, but... Yeah, I love it. Now we are in my living room area where we like watch TV and sit on the couch and stuff. And I have this Ikea Vitzjo. This is the setup we have going on. So here we have a, mm, what are you called? Scandapsis Pictus Exotica. I moved it out of my room into here. I just thought it would get a little bit better light and grow better and I could keep better tabs on when it needs to be watered because I was forgetting to water it where it was sitting before. Here we have a little watermelon peperomia. A friend actually gave me a leaf to propagate and that is what this has turned into. I did have it in a more humid environment for a while, so that's why the leaves are kind of splitting because now it's in a much more dry environment. Not looking too hot, but I'm hoping it'll do better. I'm hoping. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see if you have any tips for this plant, let me know. I really struggle with peperomia, but I love them, so it's hard, you know? Okay, and then here we have a parlor palm, doing great. Right here, we have a Scandapsis Trubii Moonlight, also doing awesome. This has been a really great, I love Scandapsis, period, but I absolutely love this one. It grows really well and easily for me. Here, oh my gosh. Oh, okay, for a second I thought that was variegated, but it's definitely not variegated. It just has like chlorosis or something. Here we have a philodendron postazanum. Postazanum, postazanum. Philodendron pasta, we'll just call it a pasta. And here we have, oh, this needs to be watered also, it's a little bit dry, a peperomia and canna, which you've seen this in previous video. If you've been here, you've probably seen this in previous videos. And I decided to chop all the tops off of my other plant because it was looking a little scraggly. Plant them in here to root and they seem to be doing really well. I think, oh yeah, if I tug on them, they are all well rooted, so that's good. That means something, right? Um, I'm pretty sure they're rooted. They are starting to put out new leaves. You can see back here. I think you can see back here. This is like fuzzy and so soft. Oh, I love it. Recommend, very highly recommend this plant. Right here we have a Scandapsis Silver Splash. I think is what it's called. I could be wrong. I'm not certain, but it also needs to be watered. <laughs> Some of the old leaves are dying off and that's okay. Old leaves on plants die off, nothing to worry about. Here we have a Philodendron Gloriosum, which again came from a little node. Well, not a little node, it was a big node. So you can kind of, you can see the node right there that I stuck in the soil, this brown bit there. And this is the growth point it put out with this leaf and a new leaf on the way, which I'm very happy about because Gloriosum is another plant that for some reason I really struggle with. I don't know why, but I am hopeful for this one. And even if it doesn't put out more leaves, I think it's just really cute with the one leaf. So <laughs> that's what I'm gonna tell myself anyway. Although I do hope it puts out a lot of leaves. I don't know why I struggle with them so bad, but I do. What the heck? Maybe I'm just a bad plant parent, you know? And then next to that, we have this Philodendron Amplissimum Silver Stripe, which is one of my favorite philodendrons. And I think it actually is super underrated. Like, I don't know, I don't feel like people really talk about this plant that much, but it deserves to be talked about. I think it's so cute. Look at the markings on the leaves. It has a really cool shape to it. And it's very, very easy, which is always, a plus, right? A plus, actually. A plus plus, if you will. Yeah, they're all doing really well there, so I'm extremely happy about that. On the mantle here, we have a little Hartley philodendron, which I just got at like Lowe's for four bucks or something, and it has taken off. It just had like these this big cluster of leaves up here. It's grown really fast, really healthy, really happy. And I love the way it looks here. Next to it is a Peperomia Hope, which as you can see is a little scraggly and stringy. I am actually going to be cutting this plant up and starting fresh with it because it was kind of putting out some empty nodes for a long while. I don't know, I just think it's time to give it a fresh start. Let it grow here where I think it's going to do a lot better. I mean, you can see it's putting out some pretty awesome leaves at the ends. 
Uh, so yeah, I did recently move it here, but I'm happy with how it's growing. So I think now is the time to chop and prop and try to get a maybe more full plant. Next to that, we have my Tahitian bridal veil, which if you watched one of my last like vlog videos, I talked about this. It is still blooming. These are some little buds that have yet to open, but I think it's doing really well here. And again, I love this plant. I would love to have a lot of plants along this to grow down, but the problem I'm having is with this philodendron Brazil. I actually had to like floof it down, but the leaves were just growing up like this. And I, A, don't want to damage the TV and B, um, it was kind of blocking our view of the TV, you know, when we're watching the office or whatever. So yeah, this plant is doing really great though. And I do think I'm going to chop it up or move it at some point. Although I don't know, it is growing really well right here. So we'll see what happens. I think I should chop it up and just start a lot of smaller plants. Maybe I could just put propagate this so that I have a whole thing of philodendron Brazil just hanging down. That would be really pretty, huh? Maybe I'm gonna do that. Should I do that in a video? Let me know. And ignore my clean laundry I have to fold right there. <laughs> I'm putting it off, you know? Okay, you know what? I'm gonna pull it out so you can see a little better. Just off to the side of that, we've got my big Monstera, which I say this every time I talk about this plant, but this is the one that I chopped completely back like two summers ago and it is growing really well, really, really well. It actually needs to be watered and I can tell because it's getting a little bit floppy. I mean, this is a new leaf, but it's still a little floppier than I'd like. So I'm gonna go ahead and water this. I think it's doing really well here. It has north light there and a little bit of south light coming from this direction. I love this plant. I'm so glad that I bought it. And then I'm so glad that when it got thrip, I didn't give up on it. And I just decided to chop it back and start fresh because the plant has definitely thanked me. It's shot off a lot of tiny little babies. I don't know if you can see them. I'll insert clips of them, but yeah, I, I think it's happy. I think it's doing well. And I think it fits this spot just perfectly. Wouldn't you say, isn't that just a really good spot for it? I love it, I think so. Okay, and then on this like coat hanger rack thing that Ryan actually built for me, I have a philodendron crimson princess <laughs> kind of shooting off some tendrils, trying to find somewhere to grab onto. Next up, we are in Reiner's bedroom, kind of the toy room. He doesn't sleep in here yet. He still sleeps in my room. Yeah, this will one day be his room. But on the window here, we have a Thanksgiving cactus, which has been blooming literally nonstop since Thanksgiving. The weather's been kind of weird, so I think that has a lot to do with it. It, but I love this plant. I love it as a hanging plant. I think it's really beautiful and like sculptural, sculptural looking like shapely. I don't know. Um, but yeah, you can see it has like dying off buds, some new ones coming in more there. And I love how, where this is on a South window, it's a little bit sun stressed. So the tips of the little bract things are turning purple and I love it. I think it's a, an, another really incredibly underrated plant. And here, this is gonna be kind of hard to show you, but I have a mixed basket of Hoya Bella. These are just propagations I've taken and regular green Hoya Bella variety. Started out as one cutting, probably about that long, I would say. I got it from a friend. I've just cut and chopped and propped until I've gotten a more full pot. And then I decided to mix it up with some of the variegated Hoya Bella the outer like variegated one, Albo Marginata one. I don't know what the actual name for it is. And a Hoya Bella Louis Bois, which is the inner variegated one. So yeah, those are some smaller propagations, but they are growing in. You can see some new little growth points. I hope you can see. I can't even tell if it's in focus because the light is so bright right here. I think it's going to grow in really beautifully. Right now it's awkward looking. I mean, this side looks great, but it is a little awkward looking. I do think it'll be so beautiful and well worth the wait once it actually does decide to grow in. So fingers crossed. Leave some positive thoughts for this plant that it grows in, how I'm hoping it will. Still in the playroom, just like on the wall, the window we were just at is right there, um, are a bunch of plants. So I moved all of the plants out of Kai's bedroom into here because he was getting to the point where I thought maybe he would start messing with them, even like the hanging ones and stuff. So I just decided to move them out of there. And then once, 
once Reiner gets old enough to sleep in here on his own and kind of mess around with them, then I will be moving them back into my bedroom. Right now it's just a little crowded with the bassinet in there, but okay, so starting over here, we have a Cal and Koei donkey ear, which I love Cal and Koei because of how they put off these little babies. This one doesn't put off babies to the same extent as like Mother of Millions or Mother of Thousands. So if you're looking for something to propagate this way that maybe doesn't put off so many babies and take over everything, this is a good route to go. I think it's so cute, the little spotted, like scalloped leaves. Yeah, there's that. I think maybe I'm going to bring you in closer. In this little section here, we have a Py Pilia peperomioides, peperomioides? Oides, um, mojito, although I don't know, it's not growing in very mojito-esque. Normally it has some little lime, like lines in it, kind of modeled variegation, but it has gone away. I'm hoping it'll come back though. Eee! Fingers crossed because I searched high and low for this plant. Um, here we have some avocado pits that I'm going to be growing. Here is my Mandula pothos, which is getting large and in charge. I actually think it's about time to repot this because it has just grown so much in the last couple of years that I've had it here. Here we have my, this is an aloe, coral fire aloe, which if you guys have watched for a while, you know I how much I love this plant. It's one of my favorite succulents. It probably actually is my favorite succulent. I think it's awesome and so beautiful. And then up here, just on the shelf above, we have some Skindapsis pictus exotica propagations in water, which I actually need to pot up soon. Maybe I'll do it in a video, um, but they are well-rooted. It's starting to put out new leaves. It's time probably, huh? And next to that, we have a, why was I gonna call this global green? This is just a golden pothos, which I uh, propagated from individual node in a video on my channel. If you're interested in watching that, here it is. <laughs> but yeah, I really like it. I think it looks so cute in here. And back here, we have a Pilia peperomioides, which I need to repot. I need to chop it and kind of restart because it fell and broke halfway down. I talked about it like a few days after it happened, but it just kind of hasn't recovered. I mean, the top of it is looking awesome, but I don't know, I just think I need to restart, give it a fresh go. And yeah, I'm gonna do that soon. Here we have a Hoya linearis, which was a cutting I also got from a friend and it has now taken off. So I wanna say the cutting was like half of this strand and I've just, chopped up the individual nodes, let it grow, chopped up the nodes, and then just have continually let it grow. One day it's gonna be a huge plant, you know? I'm determined. <laughs> Here we have a coral fire aloe baby, which actually came from this plant. Maybe I'll let her sit by her mama. Wow, it's almost as big as the mother plant. And here are two of my favorite plants. So I made these little planters, these little mini planters, and propagated some burrows tell succulent leaves into it. And this is what they've turned into. You can see the original leaf there that I stuck in. This one doesn't have the original leaf anymore, but yeah, they were just little leaf propagations. They are pretty slow growing in my opinion. And I love these. I talk about these a lot on my Instagram. So if you follow me, you've seen these like daily. <laughs> Cannot forget, I have a couple of Monstera Albo propagations there. The most recent leaf right here that it put out is starting to turn brown. It might be getting a little bit too much light for an all white leaf. I'm hoping the next one comes in with a little bit of green, which it actually looks like it's going to. Hopefully, fingers crossed, well wishes for Monster Elbow, because if it puts out too many more all white leaves, I'm going to be pretty nervous. Moving over to this middle shelf here, we have another Peperomia which this is the one that every time I talk about it in the video, I ask for the name and then every time I forget the name. That is what has just happened again for like the 10th time, I'm so sorry. But it is a type of Peperomia, really cute. I love the way it hangs. And I did also pot this up in a kind of recent video and I was really worried about it, but it seems to be doing well. It's putting out new growth, new leaves. You can kind of see the lighter bits are the new, new growth that it has put out. And I think it's really liking the Southern light exposure. And oh, just look at how that hangs. Isn't that cute? It kind of looks like a goldfish plant, but it is not a goldfish plant. It is a peperomia. I know that for certain. Okay, here is a leadhead glass terrarium with some sphagnum moss that has been brought back to life in the terrarium. And it's also growing some fern of some sort maybe maidenhair, maybe something else. I don't know. It might be like a 
water plant. I don't know what it is, but I did have this in my main room where it had north light and I moved it in here and it's kind of dying back. I don't know if you'll be able to see because of the reflection, but it's kind of dying back, turning brown and drying out a little bit, but you can see the new, there is new growth coming in green that I think is better acclimated to the southern higher light exposure. So yeah, I'm really happy with this. I'm excited for this to fill in more and for the sphagnum moss to get super long. This is kind of a wonky looking little guy, but this is a variegated Monstera species Peru. This new leaf has been like this for weeks now and it just will not unravel. So I don't know what's going on. Hopefully it'll unravel at some point, but it is still growing. It's pushing a lot of nodes, which is a little alarming, but worst case, I chop it up and try to get a plant to grow from one of those nodes. So I'm not too worried about it. I wish this leaf would open up and I think it would help it grow a little bit better because then this leaf could be absorbing light, photosynthesizing, but it's not because it's rolled up. You unroll, unroll, do it, do it. I meant please, please. Uh, behind that, we have my, thought that was a bug. It's just a dog hair. <laughs> I thought it was a spider mite. Monstera adansonii wide form, which I chopped back a while ago. This used to be huge. It was kind of overtaking my bathroom. Again, I wanted to start fresh and I did. And this is where we're at. Really happy I did it. It really likes living in the south light. It's growing really well. Looks awesome. This is one of my favorite plants. I like the wide form a lot more than the narrow form for some reason. It's just me, I like chubby leaves. And below that, we have a Dachidia ovata, which has been blooming nonstop. This is another plant I show very frequently on my Instagram. So if any of you follow me there, you've seen this plant so much, maybe too much. And it loves the south light. You can see it's kind of, sun stressed and really beautiful. I love when this plant sun stresses. And this is one where if it doesn't get enough light, it grows so slow. But once you put it in that high amount of light, it's gonna take off. It's gonna do the thing for you. So it'll reward you for giving it the right amount of light. That is a mistake I made with this plant for like the first two years. Um, but look, it's growing up kind of through. Maybe I should undo that. No, we'll just let him tangle. Should I undo it or let him tangle? So now we are in the last section. I'm gonna start at the top. Here we have lemon lime philodendron just propagating in water. This is one I moved out of Kai's room because he was kind of starting to mess with it. Back here we have Syngonium podophyllum alba, which I cut completely back and this is what it's grown. It's definitely rewarding me for the high south light. Although when I first moved it in here, it did die all the way back because it was too much light for those leaves. But now it's pushing out leaves that are acclimated and doing well in the highlight. So. Sometimes it's beneficial to cut plants back. I'm telling you, I that is a hill I will die on. We have a sport variegated monstera, which this is the one that I cut up from Lowe's that people, some people threw a hissy fit about, but it's doing well. And I now have five of these plant, five sport monsteras growing. So it was well worth it to chop it up in my opinion. In front of that, we have a monstera elbow, which it's, most recent leaf is reverted back to green. So we'll see how the next couple of leaves grow. I may end up having to chop that up, but I don't know, we'll see. And then back here is another reverted Monstera Albo. So now it is just a green Monstera, but it's growing really well. I really like it living in here. Um, and in front of that, we have some more water props. So this is a Neon Pothos. Look at those roots. It also needs to be potted up. I should probably do that here soon. I'm saying I should probably, but I'm going to, I'm going to. I'm not gonna put it off anymore because that clearly is overtaking. It needs to be moved. Am I even gonna be able to pull it out of there? Probably not. And then just below that, we have this jar with some sad golden pothos propagations. I think also because it needs to be potted up or moved into a bigger water vessel. It's not that big of a deal. It is what it is. And golden pothos is really easy to propagate. <laughs> I say that and then it's like half of it is dead, but it's fine. The parts that are growing look fine. I'm not worried about it like in the slightest. And here we have a philodendron tahiti or mayoi. I don't know if those are the same plant, but I always thought they were the same plant until recently. Somebody told me it wasn't. So I don't know, I'm confused. I don't know things, um, but I really like it. The leaf shape is cute. It's taking off. And I actually got this, bought this plant as a single leaf cutting from Ashley or planting the world red. 
uh, and I'm very, very pleased with it. It took a while to propagate, but then once it was rooted, it really took off. And back here, we have another little container of golden pothos propagations. And here, do you guys remember this baby? Looks the same as it always has and always will probably. I don't even know how these are supposed to grow, but it's still alive. This is the plant that I removed from the glued down pebbles. Yeah, and it is alive. It is alive, so <laughs> that's some, huh? That's the olden days on my channel. Okay, so we're now in my like guest bathroom. It is so echoey, I'm sorry. Uh, the rugs are getting washed, so that's why it's extra echoey. Lucky Bamboo or Dracaena something, I don't know the actual name for it, but it is Lucky Bamboo is actually a type of Dracaena. Doing really well, and the only thing that I've really changed about this plant is I did put some larger rocks to fill up the little container, water container a little more to help prop up the plant because they were falling over and then the roots were growing all weird. So I think that's really going to help it. Um, but yeah, it's doing really well here just like with the artificial bulbs. It doesn't really get light from the window that's just right there a couple feet. Um, and then on the other side of the counter here, we have, let me move my stuff, a Syngonium podophyllum. Uh, this is a white butterfly syngonium. It is my one of my first plants. It was propagated from my grandmother's plant. I don't know why I can't talk about this plant without mentioning that, but I just really love that about it. I love that about it, so I can't not mention it, but doing pretty well is definitely leaning toward the light, but that's fine because I kind of like when they grow all weird. This side of it isn't doing awesome. And I actually don't think it's a light issue. I think I keep forgetting to water it because this isn't the bathroom that we use. We don't really come in this bathroom often, so it does kind of get neglected. Uh, if I watered it more, I don't think this would be happening. But yeah, that is, that is what's going on here. Um, and then next to that on the window, we have an Aglionema Valentine. I don't know the Aglionema varieties, but it's this really, really beautiful pink one. This is the easiest Aglionema variety I personally have ever cared for, and I love it. It's very rewarding. It keeps trying to bloom, and I just cut these off. Um, but this is a an east-facing window. And then right next to that, the only other plant in this bathroom is a succulent, a type of Sansevieria, which I have no idea what variety it is. This is the mother one. And then it put off this little baby, which is now as big as it. Isn't it cute? I think it's cute. So very low maintenance. Just live in there. Okay, we're now in my bedroom, which this is probably the room where everything has changed the most. I've taken a lot of plants out of here uh, because also Kai and then the bassinet takes up a lot of space and yeah, it's just kind of a mess. So here we have my Jade Succulent, my Crassula something. This plant is so easy. It actually, this is also at the top of my succulent like list, succulents I actually like list. I'm not a huge succulent fan, but I love this one. I think it's really cute how it starts to look like a tree and it gets like bark. I don't know. I don't know, I really like it. it has a cool shape and yeah. So there's that one. And then behind it, I just have this Monstera Albo, which you guys saw me chop up and move from soil into water and whew, this is what the roots now look like. I'm gonna try and shake them off and show you a little closer. Shake off the extra water. Um, yeah, it is rooting in the water. So you guys saw me chop this up. It had like this one aerial root, which is rotten by now, but it's done a lot of other stuff with some water roots. So I think I can go ahead and do something with this soon. I'm probably gonna wait a little bit longer, but yeah. Oh, and it is putting out a new leaf finally. So I think that was the right decision for me to chop it up. You can see, well, maybe you can see. You probably can't see on camera, but there is a little bit of a bump right there. I don't even know how I'd be able to show you that, but it is definitely going to put out a new leaf. So I'm excited about that. And I'm very happy with the root growth so far. And then turning you around, I think I'm gonna have to pull this down, but this is a Hoya Carnosa Compacta. If I do this, we'll be able to see better. It's a little bit backlit where it hangs, but um, yeah, so now that it's warming up, this thing is needing to be watered way more frequently, which is why it's kind of yellowing because I was treating it as I was during the winter, forgetting that once it warms up and it gets more sunlight <laughs> that I would have to water it more. So um, yeah, it's okay. 
New Growth looks okay, but for a minute there, it was kind of turning yellow and dying off because it was too thirsty. Um, it just goes to show you need to like adjust your plant care based on the weather. <laughs> and I need to take my own advice. I'm gonna take you off of here to show you these. Move the vacuum. Um, but okay, so here we have a Labesia species real. Really cute, awesome pink plant. Here we have a Peperomia persiliata, persiliata, something like that. It's looking a little sad. It doesn't look that great. It looks better not under the pink light actually, but I think it's cute. I wish it would stop blooming because it's just making a mess everywhere. Look at that mess. This is a Labisia real that I'm propagating. Looks kind of sad, but it works. And on the shelf below that, we have a turtle back, I believe this is called, which this is the plant I got in the mail while I was in Hawaii and it sat on my porch for a month or for a week before I got to it. And this is all I was able to salvage, this like stick thing, but it is growing. So I'm happy about that. I think it'll be fine in a year <laughs> from now. And here we have a Monstera stanleyana aria, which is the yellow variegated one. I am loving how this new variegation is coming in. It's kind of doing some cool things, kind of minty, kind of yellow. I love it. And next to that, we have a Lipstick Ascenanthus Thai, Thai Sunrise, I think this is called. It is the really beautiful pink one. These are some cuttings I got from my mom. She has a really large, beautiful plant. And yeah, I just potted them up into sphagnum moss and you can see, I'm sure you can see the roots growing in there. So um, yeah, it's happy, it's growing. I am extremely pleased with it. Next to that, we have a Kalanchoe Mother of Millions. And this is a messy plant. These things drop everywhere and take over wherever they drop. So be careful about keeping plants around it. Um, I do just pull the little, you can see some that I've pulled out of like that plant and these plants here. Oh, that's embarrassing. Um, this is, ignore this these are philodendron brazil cuttings for a little a little experiment video i'm doing as you can see it's not going well but yeah uh yeah okay and here we have a sansevieria which i know nothing about sansevieria i also really like this one but i have no idea what it is i have it growing in water look at that awesome new root growing well and another sansevieria which i also really like but i have no idea what it is i just really like it and i made this planter so you know i think this is a really awesome combo together but let me know what you think i really like that plant okay and then back here i have this which what are you it is a tephrocactus geometricus i believe um ashley gave this to me and i really love it love it I think it's cute. Here we have some propagations I've put in that I keep neglecting. So some of them have dried up and died, but it's fine because some of the Syngonium Botic is growing in just fine. And this is a little sport, you can't even see it in there. Sport variegated Monstera. You can barely see it on the camera. I can barely see it in real life. And I was hoping, I was hoping that having it in there would help bring it out, but you know, it's not looking like it. We'll see what happens with this new leaf as it hardens off. And then down here, this is a plant I fully was going to toss out. It is a variegated Maranta of some sort. I can see it was dying. It died because I forgot to water it forever. And then I just gave it some water and it pushed out some new living growth. So I need to do something with that. I need to pull off all these dead leaves and just kind of let this green stuff do its thing. There we have a little Hoya Weedii, some string of hearts. A uh, Hoya Pu or a Hoya Carnosa Jade, another little succulent that has some mother of thousands in it that I missed, growing in, taking over, or another succulent, not a jade. What are you, Sansevieria something? I have no idea what it is, but I thought it's cute. Here we have some begonia propagations, which are rooted. Begonia are very easy to root, just some leaves. So, and here we have more from that same experiment I showed you up there with the philodendron Brazil. We have a Hoya species, Affinis bertone, bertonie, Hoya macrophylla albo marginata, I think, and a little Scindapsis silver lady cutting that died in the water. So sad. All right, so now in my bathroom, I have a golden pothos that I propagated by node there, and my pride and joy heart leaf philodendron, which I think is so cute and full and amazing. I love it so much. I'm excited for it to take over this whole bathroom and in fact, my whole house. That's the goal, that's the dream anyway. And on my bathroom counter, I have this uh, Hoya. Why do I wanna say Hoya? It's a Calathea macoyana, which is one of my favorite 
um, Calathea varieties. I find this one to be the easiest. This and lemon lime are the easiest in my opinion. Mine doesn't look awesome. It's okay if your plants look sad for a while, if you just keep on taking care of them, if you like decide to start taking care of them again or get to a place where you can take care of them again, they wanna live they'll grow back. Bringing you up here, we have a lemon lime pothos, or a neon pothos actually is what it's called. Um, okay, and I'm gonna show you this, although I'm really embarrassed. This was a Syngonium angustatum, which did really well, was really beautiful. One of my favorite Syngoniums for a long time. What actually happened is we went on a trip to Vegas for five days and Ryan left the bathroom window open, even though it was freezing, like it was 28 degrees outside or something. Um, the window got left open and it, died. It's frozen. Turned to mush, froze. So sad. I was hoping I could bring it back. It's not coming back. Everything about this plant is dead. <laughs> so yeah, that is why the Calathea looks so sad because it was getting frost bitten by that 25, 28 degree weather. Um, and here is another victim of that cold weather, although it is doing much better, looking really awesome. I did cut off a lot of the old leaves, but it didn't get hit as hard as the Calathea or the Syngonium. None of them got hit as bad as Syngonium. Syngonium is gone, gone, gone. Uh, look, it's putting out a leaf or a, a flower, a bloom, whatever it's called. Uh, anyway, this is a Spathophyllum domino and I love it. It's from my friend, Stacy, who's the best. Thank you, Stacy. Okay, we're now in my filming room, which is a mess, but yeah, these are the last plants I'm gonna show you. I'm not going to be showing you everything in my terrarium or my grow tent because we would be here for probably like five hours. <laughs> but yeah, it does have my six foot terrarium, which I need to do a tour of. I've just been putting it off because we have to put the things on to hold the lid up so it doesn't bonk me in the head. Okay, let me show you the plants in here. So this tray is a little bit of a rehab tray. So we have some Hoya David Kamungii, Kamungii, which is very dry. I'm kind of hoping it'll come back. We'll see, I don't know. Um, here we have aloe vera, which is doing a lot better these days. It was sad for a while. I think it was getting too cold, but now it is coming back full force, happier than ever, looking awesome. Um, and next to that, we have a Hoya species affinis Burt, you know, good old, burnt. I think it was staying too wet in the grow tent for some reason, uh, but now it's doing awesome and it really likes south light. And here we have another little gloriosum propagation. Has a leaf here and a new one coming in there already, even though this one hasn't unfurled and it does need to be watered. Don't ask me why there's a mound of sphagnum moss on top of it. I have no idea. I just live here. Okay, so next to that little tray, we have this, which are some Peperomia and canna leaves, which I'm propagating. You can propagate them by leaf. So I am doing that in water. And here we have some very sad Monstera plant, which I am trying to bring back to life. This was actually living in that bathroom where the window got left open. So it kind of rotted. A lot of the leaves are doing very poorly, but we will see what happens going forward. And it also has, see there's a, dead monster leaf. It also has some philodendron Brazil cuttings in here because I cut that thing up so much. Okay. And here we have another upright lemon lime philodendron, which actually has a bunch of Thai sunrise leaves, the variegated Thai sunrise leaves, which it kind of looks like it's reverting now, but that's fine. Actually, this one looks like it might come in with that. But for some reason, this plant looks so awesome, right? For some reason, this most recent leaf decided to just like rot. Like it's completely brown. You know what? Let's try and open it together while we're here. Oh, just the sheath turned brown. The leaf underneath is fine. So you know what? That's a good thing. And it's putting off a little inflorescence here. Cool. I feel a lot better. I should have done that long ago because I've been stressing about this plant for a week now. Next to that, we have a ficus audrey, which used to live in my upstairs bathroom, but somehow Kai got into it and I just decided to move it down here. Uh, better safe than sorry. And next to that, we have my we have my cardboard palm. That's what this is called, which used to be in my bedroom, but I moved it here because again, Kai was getting into it every once in a while and this is a toxic plant. So now it just lives downstairs. Um, okay, so back here, we have a large bird of paradise plant and my, Peace Lily sensation because it was taking over my living room upstairs. We, I couldn't really find a good spot for it. So now it lives back here and it is now a backdrop of plants that I use for videos, which you will see coming out soon 
Well, hopefully soon. Might be a while, you know me, but yeah. Okay, that's that. Okay, so those are all of my plants I keep in my house. Well, not all of them. Um, all the plants minus the ones in my grow tent, which is in the thousands, and then also in my six foot terrarium, because I don't wanna get bunked on the head and it's really hard to film it holding it up. So yeah, I'll be doing that in a later video, hopefully. I'm gonna do it. You know what, not hopefully, I'm gonna do it. I'm trying this new thing where when I say I'm gonna do something, I actually follow through. It's really hard for me right now, but I'm feeling a lot better mentally. So now's the time, you know? Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent, but I hope you liked watching this video and I hope you got your dishes done or your laundry folded or your plant chores done, whatever you decided to do, or you lounged to the extreme while you watched this. I hope you got something out of watching this, but that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see my next one.